Hello, my name is Don Brutzman. I'm here today to talk about getting started with X3D. We're going to look at a few things today. We're going to see how do you install X3D Edit, what examples are available, and how do you use the book X3D for Web Authors to learn all about how to use extensible 3D graphics. Let's get started. This slide set, getting started, and all of these materials are available online. You can see from the contents that we're going to cover uh, a bunch of stuff. This is what gets you set up for the course. This is what you need to get done beforehand so that in class it can just blast right through the material and you can focus on learning, focus on hands-on modifying X3D files so that you understand. So our goals, our goals in this course. We want to present how do you use X3D We'll be doing this in isolation, just 3D models by themselves. We'll show how to take, uh, we'll show web authors who are familiar with HTML web pages, familiar with XML, how to build different X3D models, how to connect them, how to load one inside another, how to get things talking to each other. We do teach the basic principles of 3D graphics on the web. There's a book here that's a ready reference for anybody. This can be used with lots of different books, too. There are many past books on virtual reality modeling language, many other books on 3D graphics that will give you insight into this. But the key distinction here is that we are focused on X3D. We do not require any prior programming experience. We give you everything you need to go forward on this. And finally, you do learn both the broad principles and the specific details of how X3D is used. Okay. So why do we want to do this? Jeff, I'm going to have to break. I'm sorry. The uh, screen with me looking at it with the time lag is really distracting. Is it possible to shroud that, I guess, or just not type it back to there? That would be much better if I can just look at the... Thank you. It, that, that is very good for setup, but can please add that to your checklist. That, yeah. Okay. That would probably be okay, but even that's a little distracting. So let's try that next time. But for today, black will be fine. Okay. So what is our motivation? Our motivation for today and for this course? Well, 3D graphics is very cool. There's a lot that's gone on in this arena. A lot that's happening every day. It's exciting. It makes uh, a lot of people happy. It keeps a lot of people busy in what they're doing. Uh, we want to help teach the basic principles in a way that will survive any advances in technology. It will keep track with that. It will make your knowledge portable. You'll be able to apply it to a bunch of things. But primarily, how do we get our 3D on the web and interchange models? If you really get excited about 3D, a great resource to check out is SIGGRAPH. SIGGRAPH stands for the Special Interest Group on Graphics. It's a professional society. It's made up of programmers, modelers, designers, artists, educators, you name it. At the annual conference, we can have 40 to 50,000 people coming together, all aspects of 3D, all professionals, all perspectives on what makes this work. SIGGRAPH.org is a place to go. So if we look at this pretty large community, we go, wow, that's, that's a lot. People have done quite a bit over the years. Why do we need this course? Well, as it turns out, most people building 3D are using specialty tools or they're programming. They're using authoring packages that are very specific to that piece of software, or it takes them one, two, three quarters of programming usually just to become adept programmers before they can start applying 3D graphics programming and making that useful in a, in a graphics context. So we want to we shortcut all that, all of that steep learning curve. We want to get you past one tool, this tool, or that tool. We want to give you a generic way to learn 3D in a way that's uh, directly viewable make your own models and include them. Our second slide on motivation. We want to 
create something that is supported by lots of different tools. We have uh, export to virtual reality modeling language, and now export to X3D, appearing in many different authoring tools. This makes it easier to interchange each of these specialty formats into the common denominator for the web. There are also some great conversion tools that can specialize in each of these different dialects, different modeling terms, different uh, points of reference, different software, you name it. It'll take those and bring them back into this common denominator. Okay. And so once we get past that import, export, publishing, then what else do we want to do? Well, 3D graphics is a big community, yet it's a small community. If, if you count up all the people who've ever been a SIGGRAPH, you might say, well, let's see, Los Angeles this year, 2008, well, you might get upwards of 50,000 people. Last year, maybe 30, 25 the year before that, 35 or 40 the year before that, and, and slowly trickles down, a little bursty. You say, over 30 years, how many people have there been? I don't know. 300,000, 400, maybe, maybe 500, 000, half a million people? Possibly. People who've been to SIGGRAPH, people who've been to a gamers conference, people who count themselves as graphics professionals. So I'll, I'll give you almost any number you want uh, of how big that is. Maybe, I think that's too high, would be a million. But certainly, it's in a couple hundred thousand. Okay, that sounds big. But when you compare that number to the number of people who are on the web, who are authored for the web, you see, oh, wait a minute, oh, that's, that's a very small number. How do we get past our niche community? Folks who say, sure, graphics is gaming, or graphics is that, that movie we saw, or the new Pixar movie that came out. Pass those two things to go, oh, graphics is something I can do, something I can use. That, that's where we're heading. That's why we want to align with the web. So, how do we download the examples, get those in your system so you can run them all locally for the course? Well, on the X3 examples archive page, you see uh, links for each of these. So let's connect. Let's go to the X3 for web authors examples archive, and we see here they are. And the chapters are organized one by one to match uh, by name each of the chapters in the book. We also have names for each of the uh, examples in there. So you can pretty much follow along in the book and we'll see in the slides as well, here's how we dissect each scene and make it work. You can also go to the online resources page and if we click on, uh, let's see, let me get it here. Okay, uh, yeah, we just renamed this page. Uh, you can also go to the uh, online resources page, and if we go to the examples link there, we can see that each of these is connected. You can download the zip, you can view them online, you can just browse them as is, and find each of the scenes that we might want to find and make them work. Okay, then finally, the other way to pull down examples is within X3D Edit itself. We're about to download X3D Edit and test it, but let's jump ahead a little. Here in the X3D Edit interface, if you go to the X3D menu, and then Examples, and then Download Example Archive, we'll see a picture of the slide. We'll see the live version of what's pictured in the slide, where you can select the different archive or archives that you want. Drop them down, usually in your root directory. It'll lay them out in the proper subdirectories and then uh, make that work. So you have several ways to get the examples online and start testing with them. Okay, so uh, there's our download panel once again. And let me show you something. In the notes, we can find that uh, each of these notes pages, also uh, slide pages, will also have notes with them, so you can always find some, uh, usually find some explanatory text under there if you need a little more elaboration. Okay, so 
now that you have a hold of the examples, and those examples are browsable just in your web browser, you don't need any other support for that, let's look at the X3D Edit offering tool itself and the kind of software tool support we're giving you. Okay, so first, uh, here's the web page uh, listed right up front. Uh, some background information, we uh, have provided this. It is in open source. If other people want to make changes or improvements, modifications, great. Happy to uh, support that. Uh, let it coexist. It is on the web3d.org archive site up on SourceForge. So we've written it using the Java programming language. And of course, we use XML and X3D, the extensible markup language and the extensible 3D graphics language for all of our data. So given that, Java, XML, X3D, it's extremely portable. We can run across lots of different operating systems, even working on applets and uh, special plugins now. Okay, and how did we do this? Well, we used an integrated development environment called NetBeans. What does this mean to most folks? Nothing, who cares? Who cares what the software uh, gurus did in the back room? But for those of you who do, want to get into the guts of it a little more or who are programmers, this is pretty interesting. Because we used a very professional IDE, that means we were able to build a very professional tool, X3D Edit, and just focus on the X3D things and not have to worry about all of the other infrastructure there. Okay, we have a, a long laundry list of features. It keeps getting longer. You can see some of the main things here. As you edit, you can visualize what's going on with your scene. You can use the power of XML to validate, to check your content. So if you're making errors, they're immediately becoming available to you. Uh, you can uh, drag and drop in different nodes to facilitate editing. There's special panels for each one that let you examine and modify them. And we're even adding uh, conversions, conversions to the classic Bermel, the X3D compressed binary encoding, import and export from things like Colada in different formats. And recently we've even added uh, encryption, decryption, digital signature, and authentication. So uh, probably by the end of the course you'll be uh, signing, digitally signing your uh, homework when you submit that. So we're having some fun here. Here's a copy of the website, the web page where you download it, and the key link on here is the downloads link right there. If you go to that, that will uh, show you a handful of, uh, handful of different uh, connections for how to do it. So let's shift to that. Let's see if I can get the right window up here. Okay. Voila, X3D edit authoring tool. So if we go to the downloads link, See, first of all, to run it locally, you do need Java installed. Odds are pretty good you already have that installed on your computer. If not, uh, there's the link there to pull it down and get the Java runtime environment. That's all you need to do it. If you're already a Java developer, great. It'll work off your Java development kit, JD, whatever your latest JDK is. Uh, so the easiest way to do it then is after installing Java, then you download the zip and simply extract that. And then there are two commands there uh, uh, that are at the top of the extraction directory that show you how to do it. You may want to make a shortcut to that. We're hoping that you'll uh, use this quite a bit. And uh, so therefore you want to make it handy. There we go. Now, you'll see there are a few other links, a few other pieces of information here. If uh, we'll, sh we'll see how to do chat collaboration sharing. And if you're already a NetBeans user, it shows you how to integrate it right in there. Uh, you can have it built into that IDE. So if you're already programming and other things, hey, X3D can be part of your repertoire there too. We'll also see that there's some uh, cool plugins. Okay, what is next? Here's the uh, close-up of the screen snapshot, and, and this shows you the primary elements 
in the tool right now. People may lay it out different ways. Each of these sub windows is uh, switchable and movable. So you can set it up the way you'd like to work. But the primary window up here is the uh, uh, text editing window. Just plain text because that's what X3D files are. And, and that's important. Like any XML file, you want it to be human inspectable, human understandable, as well as machine understandable. So that clarity is very positive. Our palette is where you would drag and drop nodes into the scene. It's a quick editing reference. We have the XJ3D open source viewer here to view things as we go along. We have a tree inspector, which lets you look at the structure of your X3D scene. And for each node, we also have uh, little pop-up menus that facilitate, that simplify how do I modify the parameters here? And how do I customize my node? Okay, so let's do it. Here's the link once again to pulling down the downloads. And here are some direct links to the zip. So let's do that live in real time now. I am going to pull down the X3D edit zip file. And uh, there we go. That didn't take too long. It is pretty big. We're, uh, we're working on quality, not uh, tininess. So I think we're up around 70 megabytes now. You do want to use a fast link or uh, get something else. So if we, op if we open it up then, you saw on broadband, it didn't take any time at all to pull that down. Let's extract this. I'm going to extract it right to my desktop. and. Uh, so we'll say X3D edit to uh, podcast test is the directory. I'm going to put that in and we'll drop it all in. I'm going to close down my other copy of X3D edit here so that there's nothing up my sleeve and we can get a clean launch of this guy. Okay, so it's uh, about to get extracted, and then we will start that. All right, looks like we're all done. Build down to the desktop. Oops, I better clean up my desk is what it looks like. Uh, let's find the folder. Well, I have to get a little smarter here. Where did I put my folder? I'm sure this never happens to any of you. You can find your folder while I'm looking for mine. Um, there we go. It's in my downloads directory instead of my desktop. So I'll pull it up there, put it back on the desktop. Confirmation that extraction is complete. And here it is. So let's look at that directory. There it is as advertised. We have a Mac command, which ought to be usable on Linux. Uh, we also have a Windows shell command. So let's run that Windows batch file. And here we go. It's loading. And now it's launched. We can see that it remembered my last settings from running a minute ago, even though this is a brand new install. And that's all there was to it. Really, once you have Java, just get that down and run it, and we're up. Okay, so here is our uh, scene, and, and we have a first example here, Hello World. And we have some palettes of nodes. We have our live 3D window, which I'm now dragging and maneuvering around, navigating through there. And we have... This, XML Navigator here, which lets us look at the graph version of this exact same data. So several ways to inspect our material. Okay, So if you haven't finished, then now is a good time to make sure you've got your X3D edit running, or you can do that at the end of the podcast. But I suggest you do it now. Okay, so what's next? Well, 
One good turn deserves another. If you have extra data, you may want to get an update to it. So it turns out that we are shipping updates about every week. We're adding a, a little feature here, a little feature there, maybe fixing a bug or two. So down in the right-hand corner of your, of your system, of your X3D edit, you can see that uh, that little icon there will, will register if we have any updates. So let's check that out in our X3D edit and see if we got that. Uh, sure enough, there it is. And it found two updates. In this case, it found some updates for uh, NetBeans. So what we can do is say, sure, we'll try out these new updates. I click to accept the uh, open source license. It's not just X3D Edit, but everything in NetBeans is open source. So you say, once we get those updates, we can restart. And let's see how long it takes. for this thing to relaunch. Okay, there it is. We are relaunched and ready to go. So that's how quickly it is. My goodness, seven updates found. One led to another. So uh, I think I will save those for later. We're going to just keep pressing on. But this is good news, basically, because it means we're on a very robust platform here. We get all of these other updates for free. You get the benefit of those ongoing bug fixes, both in the X3D and in just the basic integrated development environment. You can use X3D Edit for other files as well, text files, images. There's lots of uses. Okay, But that's up to you. What else comes in there? Well, we have a help system. You see an example of it here. That includes lots of tool tips for each node. It has detailed instructions of what's going on. It has the major pages that we care about. It even has copies of the specification for X3D. We've also linked the uh, hotkey for those of you who like using uh, all the shortcuts instead of the menus and keyboards. So that's in there, LinkedIn. And OK, so tons and tons of tool capability. Let's, let's drill down now, and let's do an example. Hello World is our first example. Hello World's pretty interesting. If you uh, study computer science, if you take an introduction to programming languages course, then what you'll probably see someday is uh, a compar comparison of different languages. How does one do it versus another? And, and a time-tested, uh, time-honored tradition in different languages is, is you'll write a Hello World program. Hello world. That sounds kind of curious. What is it? Well, usually it's just a program that does one simple thing. It prints an output and says, hello world. And you might well think, well, why would we bother with something so simple or trivial? Answer, because it's very revealing when you compare different languages one to the other, just how their syntax, their style, the way they write things out are. So we said, well, if we're going to do the simplest program, let's do a hello world. Well, now we get to uh, brag a little bit. 3D is maybe cooler than some programming languages, so we get to actually have a world there. So this is where you can find it. You can look at the different ways of running it, and it's a great way, just this one example, to study the hello world. On the next slide, you can see, oh, here's our interface. Once again, X3D edit. We've got the live version there. We've got the tree view. We've got the plain text XML in the middle. And so it's uh, very handy. We can just go, we look way down in there. It took a little finding, but we see two strings, hello and world. And what are those about? Well, the first string for hello is about the first line, and world is the second line. And that's why we see the two in two different places in the scene. But we also see that there's a globe up there and that we have put an image on it. So let's dissect this guy a little further. Okay, so I'm going to switch from the slide set back to X3D Edit. 
here's our hello world. Let's shrink this guy down. I'm going to drag this window around a little bit if it'll let me. There we go. And we can separate the 3D model that's live here from our scene inspector navigating the scene. And so we can jump around and we can find the different parts of the scene. If I want to say, oh, where's that sphere? I'll double click here up in the uh, left. And that brought me down here. And we say, oh, yep, yeah, a sphere. Okay, well, that's simple enough. And what did we do with it? Well, we put a material on it. And we put a, uh, uh, an image on it. Let's look at that image texture. So I'm going to right click, select edit element under cursor. And I'll do that first, I think, for the sphere. Edit element. We'll look at that sphere element. And we see here that the sphere node is actually pretty simple. It just has a radius value and whether or not that thing is solid, whether there's an inside or not. Okay, so this is, well, one, meaning one meter. Pretty small world. But that small world's good enough. What else did we do? We put an image on it, an image texture. So this is sometimes considered an advanced capability. We think it's pretty straightforward. Image texture simply says, take a file and put it on top. And then we can view that image on top. So if we wanted to view that image, we could pull that up, and so why don't we do that? We'll look for that image, earthtopo.png. There it is right there. Oh, okay, so earthtopo.png is a picture of the Earth, but it's flat. And it is wrapped around the sphere to round it out. We can also see that image is pretty cool because there are no clouds on it. It's a composite image constructed from many individual issues. Back in the low world scene, what would it look like if we didn't strap on, wrap around that image? Well, let's just cut it and delete it. And then I'm going to right click and say, refresh my viewer. And we see, oh, all we had underneath there was a blue globe. Okay, and then I'll use another advanced trick here. I'll shift that to wireframe mode in XJ3D. Let's undock it. And Alt W for, if I can get it to pay attention to me here. There we go. Alt Shift W. Alt Shift W. Let me go wireframe. And we can see, oh, there's the underlying geometry for Hello World. And we can see, oh, look at that. Lots and lots of triangles. Not just for the sphere, but for the text. And so here's a valuable lesson under the hood inside the world right now. How do we do it? Well, mostly through triangles and then applying colors to them and then applying an image. If we want to get it back, I'll just reshow my XJ3D here and put it back where I want it. Hopefully it's getting creative on me here. And re-render it. There it is. Now let's go back to our editing scene and go, well, I liked it better with the world on top. So I will undo. We can do that by going up to the top here. Is our undo key. Sure enough, there is our image texture. Let's refresh our viewer. And lo and behold, it goes out, finds the image, drapes it on again. Okay, so this is how you can have control of changing your scene, maybe even breaking it, and then putting it back together. And when you're ready, update and see what it looks like. Okay, so there's a quick tour of some of the things inside Hello World. All right, next up. Hello world. If we look inside the examples, there are links to this in the slides and in your downloaded examples and online. You can say, oh, here's the same scene pretty printed with an inset there. So let's go to that live and see what that looks like. 
I'm going to go to the examples page, again on our X3D resources. And if we go to any of these examples, I'll go to the online one in X3D authors. And then I'll just uh, drill down into our Hello World examples. Chapter 1. I'll just go right to the top. Hello, capital W, world.x3d. And there it is. We can see the same thing. You can also see in any of these examples, if we drill down on these, right in chapter one, we also see it there. And we go, okay, hello world, all in one inset. And now in the bottom of the page, we see the pretty print HTML. So if you wanted a hard copy of this thing, you don't have to just print the source. You could go to the example page, HTML, and play this thing out and look at it. Uh, you can see we even have some nice features in here. If I click on any of these guys, all of the image links are smart. And we can see that, oh, we can have multiple images, either locally or online. And I'm just clicking through and showing that you can get each of these images and restore. That one looks kind of funky. But basically that they work. Okay, back to the slides. What else do we have in here? Well, here's the pretty print just by itself. How did I get there? Well, in the online help pages, if we click on the upper right, where it has the different links to different versions of the slides, then we can just click on that guy. And sure enough, there it is all by itself, suitable for printing, suitable for copying, suitable for mailing to somebody if you want to show them the source of your work. Okay, what's next? Our unofficial slogan and all this stuff is, uh, but wait, there's more. There's always more features to have. So here's a quick rundown of some of those. You probably want to explore yourself and figure out what's in there, how do you use it. To view X3D, to see the graphics, not just the source, the text, but the actual 3D, you want to have a good viewer. We use the XJ3D open source. But there are plenty of others as well, and you can download them into other applications. We already saw where to get some of those on the help page. If you look here, if we right click in the scene, we can see what external viewers are possible. To run those, you have to set it up though. You have to go to other viewer. You have to go to your tools, and then your uh, options, and miscellaneous and X3D edit. So tools, options, miscellaneous, X3D. And this is where you would first download other browsers if you want them, other viewers, and then they should be available. And those will simply link you to the download pages and you can get them. Do you have to do all that? No. We provide it as a convenience and uh, for advanced authors, that's very helpful, actually, to have multiple ways to view it. Okay, so you can use XJ3D by itself, and that's just fine. You can get one of these others, and that's just fine, too. What else can you do? Well, we have a chat session, and in fact, I have the chat plugged in here. Let's take a look at that. We'll go to uh, X3D Edit, and let's see if my chat window is still live. No, because we reset. It's gone, so let's get it. I've got it installed here already. We'll connect up. And I'm logging into a chat server. It happens to be at uh, share.java.net. It's something offered to the NetBeans community. And because I've logged in before, we have uh, an X3D room for this. So I'm going to double click on that, connect. And what we should see here, if everything works, we should see that chat room come up as yet another pane to be uh, edited, yet another window. Let's try that again. Okay, here we go. So, uh, should be in the room. Uh, and
And then if somebody else is there, it looks like the other person I had took off. But you can type in, uh, hey, what happened? And then send it, and we have a shared chat room. So you will find, if you're taking this course live while we're doing it, we'll have the chat room open during class so that students can record questions or answers or comments as we go. And then we post all that dialogue to our class mailing list when we're done. So that's pretty helpful. Uh, you can also share files in here, so that's cool. So it lets you just stay right in the tool, look at the different things that you're doing, and then uh, go back and get into the chat room when you're ready to uh, do something else. Okay, but wait, there's more. What else do we have? Let's find it. Uh, the chat collaboration shows you how to get connected to that. So we have some pretty good dis descriptions here. We also have, uh, my goodness, we have directions for how to do it. So if you click on that link, or you get there from the X3D Edit homepage, this page will walk you through the different steps, all the different, yes, I agree, I agree, I agree again, and then you connect up to the chat room and you're a player too. Uh, this is pretty cool. Two weeks ago, uh, the X3D networking group had some work to do together. So we had three people on. I was here in Monterey. We had uh, Chris Thorne in Australia, about eight time zones away. And then we had another guy who wanted to look over our shoulders. He logged in from London. Another eight time zones the other way. And how about that? We were all sharing and collaborating in real time. Pretty fun. All right, so a little more. Exposition. What else? If you're an advanced user, if you're building lots of models or lots of code, you might want version control, revision control for how you do different uh, updates for multiple people making changes. There's directions in there for how to add that to the tool. Okay, we'll skip on the features. There's plenty more. We'll cover them in the course, and you can find them yourself when you work. Let's look now at uh, the last part of today's talk, which is the book. How do we use the book on this? And uh, um, we do have a book offered. It's uh, uh, Leonard Daly and myself offered, authored the first book on X3D graphics. We have targeted it. You see from the title, it's not for programmers. It's not for geeks. It's basically for web authors. Anybody who's making XML, HTML, Building web pages, that's where we think the sweet spot is, of making X3D get farther along. You can get a hard copy of the book, obviously, as you see here, or you can get an electronic copy of the book. Uh, this is the only thing that costs money. Uh, if you are in the US government and buy it through that, uh, because I'm a government employee, I am carefully shielded from any royalties you might get. This is also what allows me to recommend this book to you. Why did we write it? Well, because nobody else did. Frankly, uh, I would have loved it if uh, somebody else stepped up, because we, we keep very busy. But there was a need, so we wrote this. And I hope you enjoy it. We will welcome any changes and improvements you might have. The next section shows that for all of the resources we have here, it's up to you if you get the book or not. You can figure this out from the slides and from the examples and from the tool. But if you wanted to know the answer to the question of what would Len do or what would Don say, well, we spent 470 pages worth of here's what we think. So that's the highest possible bandwidth we could offer you. So if you go in the book, and you see, you'll see we've structured it very carefully, and, and frankly, we had to pay a lot of attention to this because it's the first book out that's dedicated to X3D. So we first grouped it for fundamentals, then chapters on event animation, scripting, how do we make things change, and then finally, advanced topics at the end. You can use in any order. Okay, and we want you to learn, so therefore, please, 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 open those examples up as we go through it. See if they work for you. Change them. Break them. Fix them. Watch them again. Make them better. Tell us if you think you have a better answer. That's how you learn. 
Okay, so here are the chapter descriptions, a little more detail. This is also the course structure and the video podcast structure. We're going to go through chapter by chapter. That's the way the slides are organized. That's the way we're going to present the material. Why? Because it works. It helps you follow along. Okay? You can see that the first chapter has a lot of technical detail, a lot of overview. And so this is where we just jammed in everything about how, why, when, and where does it work. You can read all of that, or part of that, or maybe just about none of that. If you want to just get into authoring, great. Skip ahead to chapter two and get right into it where we do primitives, the basic geometry, the primitive geometry in X3D. And then we start grouping things. We start seeing in chapter four how to change the viewpoint how to help the user navigate in different scenes. In chapter five, we'll change appearance. We call the appearance is basically how something looks, but there's different ways of achieving appearance. The primary one being material. The material node describes color. What are the different types of color? There's not just one. Look, there's the diffuse color is the one we mostly see, but there's also emissive, which is what glows, there's uh, uh, specular color, reflections from highlights, whether there's transparency, there's other features as well. So we see material is pretty cool. And then, we, then we have textures. Oh, texture, that's what we saw a few minutes ago in Hello World. Taking an image file, taking a movie file, wrapping it around the geometry, and helping that make it look more realistic. Think of it as painting on the geometry. Okay, we've got a number of ways to accomplish that. Chapter six. So second chapter on geometry. There's a lot of geometry in X3D. Hey, guess what? 3D graphics is about 3D geometry. So we look here at points, lines, and the basic polygon nodes. If you've studied other 3D graphics before, other languages, other tools, a lot of this will seem familiar. You'll see how X3D does it. Good news, because X3D is the web interchange for 3D, it's very likely that if you've studied 3D before in some fashion, you will see things you recognize before and say, ah, that's the same, oh, this is a little different. I see how they connect. Then in chapter seven, we look at how do we animate? How do we change things? How do we make them active? It's a famous saying, if it ain't moving, it ain't 3D. You think about that? Yeah, I guess any static picture could be just that, a photograph or a painting or a snapshot. It's not until you move things that the user is able to see, I now can pick out the spatial aspects of this, the perspective, the change in size and shape and vantage point. Okay, we extend on that kind of animation in chapter eight. How do we help users interact? Not just fly around or walk through a scene, but click, select, touch, drag, reshape. There are a bunch of tools for that. The more you do, the more you want to do. Chapter nine takes it even further. How do we hook up some of these nodes better with utilities to better and more easily connect them to make them more sophisticated, more responsive to what the user wants to do? Then. Uh, Really popular there is scripting. Maybe there isn't a node in X3D. Maybe there is not a built-in way to do just what you want to do. Okay, write your own. Let's make a script that takes an input, produces an output, figures out how to get from one to the other so that you can do what you want. Chapter 10, more geometry. In this case, 2D nodes, flat nodes, just how to make it easy to splat some of these things in the scene. Then we're getting into the advanced topics, lighting. What makes these things visible? It's a virtual camera and virtual lights to make things visible. We also look at sound, background, and fog. Last couple of chapters, how do we use billboards? How do we use sound? How do we use even fancier triangles in our fourth geometry chapter? This is a lot closer to the classic low-level programming nodes. Then finally, the X in X3D, extensible. It means you can write your own nodes. You can extend the language to make 
cookie cutter templates of new capabilities. Prototype nodes are how we do that. Okay, so how would you use that book? We've said this a few times. Can't say it enough. Please do this. Get your hands on the tool or another tool and edit author change. If you're just starting, we're going to go right through the chapters. We'll briefly go over chapter one and revisit it periodically. If you're experienced, you might want to look deeply into chapter one because it'll give you the guts of how your system might have related to the new system of X3D. And if you're already experienced, well, please use it in any order. You already know what you're doing. We've made it so it's not just a teaching book, but it's a reference manual that you can lose as you get great. Okay, so what's left? Summary. We've covered a bunch of things today. I hope this lead-off podcast helps you get started. Why do you want to get started? How do you get started with the tools? How do you get the examples? How do you go through the book? Please take the time to get it right. Here in class, we will take extra time with students to edit it down, to make sure that they're properly set up. At the end of each slide set, we have a set of references, easy links for how to get there. You may want to check back in the slides. If you take the PDF version of the slides, you'll see that the first half of the slides are the full slides, but then we duplicate them. We give you versions that have the notes pages as well. So depending on how you like to study, you might want to print out the slides or have them up while we go through them in class or on the podcast. If you look on the notes parts, you will find links and hints and extra ideas about how to use these things. Okay, so there you go.